Well, it's a scary thought that we're sharing the roads with repeat drink drivers. One news revealed exclusive figures last night showing drink driving convictions last year were the lowest in four years, but the number of people who've been caught eight or more times was the highest in a decade. So what should be done to stop these recidivist drink drivers getting back behind the wheel? Joining me now is drug and alcohol counsellor Roger Brooking. Good morning, Roger. Thank you for joining us. Did, did this spike in these repeat offenders, did this surprise you? Uh, not at all. I think um, New Zealand, our binge drinking culture has been out of control for the last 20 years, ever since liquor laws were liberalised in New Zealand. And one of the manifestations of binge drinking is repeat drink driving. So more and more people are appearing in court with, as repeat offenders. Something I'm struggling to understand, and Lisa Owen's piece last night on the 6 o'clock news, she talked about one person that had been caught 19 times. And we've had a lot of feedback this morning on why someone like this is not in jail. He probably has been sent to jail numerous times. And uh, this is where you get to the, the crux of the problem of what's not happening in New Zealand in dealing with drink driving. We're good at punishing them. We do send drink drivers to jail, um, but we don't get them into treatment. And, you know, drink 60% of people convicted of drink driving meet criteria for a drinking problem. We're not actually addressing the cause of the problem, we're just punishing them. So they should be in rehab courses or something like that. Why are they not being put into this courses? Is this the easier option? Is it just to give them a fine or, or put them in jail? Well, th there's three kinds of disqualification which judges impose. There's short disqualifications, which are basically 12 months or less. Then there's indefinite disqualifications. And then there are occasional disqualifications of longer than 12 months. Now, what's happening is that the people who are disqualified indefinitely or who get a, a, a disqualification of two, three, or even, you know, one person had eight years, these people are not being assessed and getting into treatment. So. They simply, if they get punished, they go to jail, they come out and they carry on drink driving. And you're right, that was one of the things that came loud and clear last night. A lot of them didn't know why they were the being repeat offenders. Um, this interlocks in cars. Is this something you're familiar with? Apparently this could be being rolled out soon, where if you have one conviction, then your car will lock if you, you have to take a breath test. Will that help? Well, it, it may help. And the research on interlocks is that they are effective, but once again, they're only effective if they're combined with treatment. An interlock is a kind of punishment. It's like, you know, you can't use your car while the interlock is in there if you've been drinking. But if you don't put that person into treatment, eventually the interlock comes off and then you're back where you started. So what sort of treatment would you like to see? And, and, and is there proof that the treatment actually works for these types of people? A person that will do it 19 times? Well, the, the, there are um, a number of there's good evidence about what works in, in treatment programs. Another of the difficulties that New Zealand has is that there are so few specialised programs for drink drivers. Uh, I'm involved in running a, uh, such a program in Wellington, but to my knowledge there's only half a dozen of them in the whole country. And this is one of the biggest difficulties that New Zealand has not put sufficient resources into providing drink uh, programs for repeat drink drivers. Well, Roger Brooking from uh, Drug and Alcohol Counselor, thank you so much for joining us and hopefully this will shed a bit of light on what needs to happen. Perhaps just booking people isn't the answer. Thank you.